Okay, hello and welcome to this training presentation from Garrett Cole on how to uh, uh, basically erase the uh, configuration of your switch and take the switch back to factory defaults. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to open up the browser, log back into the switch, manager, then manager. Okay, so here we have the administration and in the administration menu we have the kill config section here. Okay, so the kill config here is, as it says at the top here, restored to defaults. Now what this gives you the ability to do is basically take the switch and wipe everything by just clicking OK. But if you want to wipe everything with the exception of whatever you want to keep, whatever you want to keep, you just select those, um, those sections, for example, if you want to keep the VLAN configuration and the LACP configuration, just select those two uh, sections of the configuration file, everything will, else will be uh, erased with the exception of the items you've selected to save. Okay, Here we want to take it back to the factory defaults and click OK. You must reboot the changes to take effect. OK, OK. And here we have the administration where we have the kill config. At the bottom of the administration menu we have the reboot. Click on the reboot, click OK and it'll take a few moments to uh, to reboot and then we can log back in okay so let's try and log back into the switch by using again because you wipe the configuration file the IP address you'll need to use is the default IP address which is 192.168.1.2 uh, the default user accounts of manager and manager and then you can go to the administration and you can have a look to see if there's anything being retained and there won't be anything retained so for example we had some host information there last time and that's all been wiped out. One of the uh, important things to notice is that if you go to the log section the log information will be retained. Okay, So even if you kill the configuration file the system log will still be there. It's not wiping everything it's only wiping the configuration. Okay, So that's uh, useful to know. Um, that can actually be very useful for troubleshooting purposes to do have some historical check of what happened before everything went haywire or we had some problems or what have you. Again it's important to remember at this point if you do need to save the configuration file of your switch use the uh, floppy disk drive here if you make any changes uh, it'll go red if you want to save it just click it and it'll go green again and that's how you, make, you save the changes the important thing to note is that the reason you have to save after you've made the changes is because uh, when you make the changes uh, they always save to the running configuration file which is stored in RAM. Uh, RAM memory, random access memory is volatile which means that if the switch loses power those changes are stored in volatile memory and they will be lost. Uh, so in order to store it to, if you like, the switch's hard drive uh, which is actually not a hard drive, it's actually flash uh, a non-volatile uh, form of memory uh, we use flash from routers because there's no moving parts and it makes it much more reliable uh, so we have the two configuration files, the running configuration in RAM and the saved configuration file in uh, flash um, and that way we can have the speed of RAM with the stability of flash, that's why we have two also if you do make a, a change to the switch and you goof it up and uh, the switch becomes unresponsive all you need to do is reboot the switch and those changes will be uh, taken back to the previous saved configuration so very useful uh, there is a reason for it it's the same for all uh, mainstream switch manufacturers mainstream router manufacturers as well final thing to note is if you are asked to uh, view the configuration file from the GUI you can't actually do that directly what you actually have to do is you have to use the file management and uh, in fact we'll do that right now so we'll fire up a TFTP server and we'll get that up and running and we'll go to TFTP uh, we'll type in the IP address of the uh, my laptop and we'll call this uh, testing config um, we got two choices. Uh, we can either use the uh, the basic version, the summarized version of the config file, which is the config. Uh, this is uh, being deprecated. It's the old-fashioned version. We don't like to use this anymore. 
the script versions where it's at. This is the best version, it's the most detailed, so we'll use that here. Again, we're sending it up from the switch to the server. Click OK. That's been sent. Now all we need to do is go to the directory, open it up, and in here we have uh, uh, testing config. Uh, open that with uh, Notepad, and there we are. We can see the configuration file of the switch, the uh, s the uh, script version of the configuration file, with every single command. It's all specified there. So although we can't uh, see it in the GUI. It takes about two seconds to upload it to your computer, and uh, there's a separate video that shows you how to use the TFTP server in detail. Uh, here, I just wanted to show you how you could see the configuration file if you only wanted to use the switch, uh, switch is GUI, and not the uh, command line interface. Okay, so that completes uh, that completes uh, this section uh, on um, the configuration files, uh, uh, the uh, erasing the um, switch configuration, taking it back to factory defaults and viewing some of the configuration files and some of the other miscellaneous topics surrounding uh, the configuration files. So I hope this has been interesting for you, I hope this has been helpful and useful and on behalf of Garrett.com I would like to thank you for your time and goodbye.